maybe the second night of Ramadan. Hey, my <laughs> everyone and welcome back to another episode of Art Therapy! We're dressed in our traditional riot clothes! Today is going to be a Ramadan riot edition and we'll be answering some questions relating to Ramadan, Ramadan and riot. Today's art form is going to be Henna! Oh this smells good, it smells like lavender or something. Oh, right. Uh, also, thank you to Fatia. Her henna is called Motive Henna. Go support her. She's really, really talented. And the henna smells amazing. <laughs> Alright. No, I'm, you know I'm just going to expose myself. I'm wearing my PJ pants right now. So if you see it, you didn't. <laughs> <laughs> so how's your Ramadan going, sister? It was really nice. And you know how like Ramadan has like a certain feel to it? The second you enter the month of Ramadan, you just feel so much more peaceful. Mm -hmm. That was how it felt like. But you know what? I wrote a poem. <laughs> I wrote a poem for Ramadan with some um, serious background music. Okay. Dear Allah, thank you for Ramadan because it's a reminder of all the luxuries that I have and am, and am grateful for. It's the time to reconnect with my family and improve our relationship with each other. Because I'm able to unite my brothers and sisters for the goal of being closer to you. Ramadan invites me to reflect on myself, my character, and how I can improve myself as a Muslim, a daughter, and most importantly, a human being. Thank you for Ramadan, for the peace that you've placed within me throughout this holy month. For letting me fall in love with Islam again and again. Thank you Allah for Ramadan. May we reach Ramadan next year as well. Let the tears fall, guys. Let the tears fall. That's so cute, dude. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Hang on. Dad, get stop. Stop moving. <laughs> How my Ramadan is going? Okay, I'll just tell my backstory. But basically, I was born into Islam, and then I kind of left it for like five years, and then I came back. And honestly, this Ramadan has been so amazing for me dude like spiritually it's so good do you know that quote from fault in our stars how she explained what it's like to fall in love it's like sleeping it's like slowly slowly going to and then it happens all at once Aww. and for me it was like that it's like slowly slowly coming back to Allah and then in Ramadan this year it was like bam all at Aww. once and it's just oh such a beautiful feeling like alhamdulillah I'm so glad I get to feel this way I feel like I've grown a lot spiritually and like I'm growing closer to Allah. I saw your journey coming back to Islam, right? And I was like, oh my gosh, I felt so warm Aww. seeing you love Islam again. I'm like, oh. And then I wanted to know more, like learn more about Islam. Like before really? this, I didn't. Yeah, yeah. Because, yeah. Like, because my family, we just we go for like classes and everything, and usually like I'll just go there because my family goes, right? Yeah. But like seeing you want to know more about Islam and like fall back in love with it makes me want to go like do the same thing like I really want to learn more about Islam it's such an amazing feeling to like I feel like every Muslim's gone through that though like to go from being religious because your parents tell you to do and because it's the norm in your household to like genuinely falling in love with Islam yeah, on it's your a, own it's a different feeling it's right? a different feeling dude it's amazing deep talk for a second okay yes. I was looking at my past YouTube vlogs at that time I was saying how numb I felt this Ramadan has changed me because I'm able to feel more it's really weird because like I I cry more because I haven't cried in a long time I remember my friend told me this good news about her life and like I just cried out of happiness I haven't been able to do that in a while so I was like wow like you know, it felt, it felt like, okay, my heart, there was like like a bird's cage on it before yeah. and now it's like <laughs> <laughs> Oh, but I want to ask you though, like, so how how did you find your way back mm. to Islam? That's an interesting question. <laughs> how did I? <laughs> okay, I don't know if I should do this. If you don't, then it's okay. Going really deep, but at the start of the year, um, I had a suicidal attempt and it was so close, so, so close. And I don't know what stopped me, but something in me that 
I felt was greater than myself stopped me at that moment mm -hmm. afterwards it made me question it a lot there was this other breaking point where I just sat at my park and I was just lying down on the grass and I was just like looking up at the sky and I was like bawling my eyes out I was in so much pain I felt so alone and like I remember I was just like crying out to something but I don't know what I wanted there to be a god but I wasn't sure if that existed mm -hmm. I wasn't sure if there was a god or not but I just remember saying that I needed one anyways if, even if there wasn't one I just needed one so I remember just saying that saying that saying that and then like slowly 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 I feel like Allah kind of like dropped signs like little mm -hmm. mini signs in my everyday life I was at, um, at a time where I was exploring different religions just trying to see which one's the right one for me I think Allah did drop signs for me because I remember the more like I learned about different religions I'm like nah man this isn't the one yeah it didn't touch my heart but a week within Ramadan I prayed for the first time in a very very long time and I got that feeling I was like this is the one man this Aww. is the one so you know that tree that I like oh yeah so this is my favorite tree <laughs> within there but I would go there every afternoon and I didn't tell anyone this I didn't tell my mom no one I always tell you I always go to that tree right every yeah. afternoon but I never said what I did yeah. so I would go to that tree I'd climb at the top and I would read the Quran oh <laughs> I'm gonna cry I like my approach to it because I got closer to Allah without telling anyone someone said that your relationship with Allah is very sacred right it's it's a vertical um, relationship mm -hmm. like the relationship we have with each other is horizontal but if it's with Allah it's vertical man you shouldn't like disrupt anyone's relationship with Allah you know so that's what I was focusing on was just like, my vertical just relationship you and Allah. yeah like, I wasn't gonna let anyone get in the way of my relationship with Allah like don't tell me your rules don't tell me this this and that let me find my own way so that's how I did it and alhamdulillah that vertical relationship is like strong man it's like steel we never talk about this actually yeah we don't i actually don't like to talk about it because i feel like everyone has their kind of like views on religion and i don't want to like like i said disrupt your vertical mm. relationship and i don't want anyone to disrupt mine yeah. it's very personal stuff yeah every time i like look at you and how you reconnect with Allah, it's so inspiring oh. like i thought you this before and you know i always felt like ashamed though actually i never told you this why? Like whenever um, we talk about religion, I just always felt ashamed to talk about it because I always felt ashamed that I wasn't um, that religious or maybe like the way I'm approaching religion is more different compared to you. Yeah. I don't know. I always feel like there was like a right way and a wrong way, yeah. you know, and I always felt like I was always doing the wrong way. <laughs> That's why I think I never talked to you about religion. Yeah. Well, you're afraid of what I I thought. Yeah. Maybe this is just in my own head, but I always felt like everyone's judging me because my approach is so different. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, in the end, same goal, man. Who cares? Yeah, that's true. Your journey to Allah is different from others, right? But I respect that. Yeah, that's the word. I respect your journey because it's. It doesn't matter if it's different, but like, it's because you are willing to do it, and. connection like i don't want to be very like judgmental about that because i also grew up like into an islamic background and within a very religious family but like i really um respect the people who find it their own way they don't just follow the crowd mm. so they they actually want to learn about islam because they want that connection so yeah I respect you, man. <laughs> Thanks, dude. I never heard you say that. Okay, I'm actually really loving this series. <laughs> what the heck? Yeah, it's like bring out a different side to us. It's yeah. not a different side, like the personal side of us. From sharing my story, I hope there's people who can relate. Or if not, maybe this is for my future self to see and look back on, you know? Yeah. Because I always want to remember my journey. 
you know what i really miss having ramadan in singapore because in singapore right my house was really 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 close to the mosque every time for iftar my family will walk to the mosque and then we have iftar together and you know what was the best thing about it huh? it's the porridge there oh everyone knows this bubo masjid during ramadan oh. is the best thing in the world man. <laughs> but it's just also like the feel of having other people with you when you break fast and tarawih prayer at the mosque all that like it's the little things that you get to do together as like a muslim community i remember in singapore like this was when i was really young we'll only play pray like eight rakats and then we'll go play so there's this one time i prayed eight rakats and usually my sister would also just pray eight rakats and then we go outside and then we play Okay. But then there's this one time she was like, no, I'm gonna stay for the whole 20 regards. I was like, traitor! <laughs> Listening to you get um excited about Ramadan makes me excited about it. Oh really? Yeah, because normally, I don't know, the people around me they're just like, oh yeah, it's Ramadan. It's just Ramadan. But like for you you like it's like a celebration. <laughs> I'm like, oh I wanna get excited too. You know how um in Islam, uh Ramadan and fasting is like one of our one of our um, pillars of Islam, like yeah. one thing that you have to do, and I honestly love it because of what it teaches us. It teaches us. It's not only about fasting. It's not only about like no food, no drinks, but it also, it also reminds you to look back on yourself. Like, all right, this twelve months, just one month, one month, just look at yourself. What have you done this year? What have you done to improve your own character? And it just makes everyone in the muslim community rethink themselves the reason why we don't eat or drink is to remind ourselves to appreciate what we have and to help out the needy and that's why we always pay zakat so like at least a portion of our wealth is given to the people who need it the most yeah and i love that message like Same. i love that we are always reminded that when we have the position to help other people, we should help other people. I love that you love Ramadan a lot. <laughs> and now it makes me love Ramadan a lot. <laughs> I'm going to do cat paws. Rumi's That's cat so paws. random. <laughs> yeah. Because it reminds me of you. Zara is obsessed with her cat Rumi. Like her Instagram is just Rumi's account at this point. It's not even mine. <laughs> she runs the account. What are you saying? <laughs> it's actually cute, man. <laughs> yeah. Show, show. Bing. I got a little roomy. A little roomy. I want to look Saturn. Because you're out of this world. Ah! And that's what you remind me of. Planet. Yeah. When you try to like communicate things, <laughs> you're like so far away from this world, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I, I love it, honestly. <laughs> that's one of the things I love about you. Here we go. Finished. That's finished. The, <laughs> the finished. The finished artistry. <laughs> the art. The, the artist. artist. <laughs> okay, my turn. Oh, are you ready? So ready. Mm. I haven't had my hair done in so long. I think the last time I had it done was primary school. Also, Sophie's really good at piping, guys. <laughs> <laughs> Hands the Nutella tart. <laughs> yeah, we found that out recently. Sophie's a great piper. This Ramadan, I learned to truly, truly trust Allah. I mean, I've always known this, but I've never truly, like, genuinely 100% felt it. Looking back at my past videos as well, I was, I remember I talked a lot about, like, not having control about situations, and that made me, like, really, really, um, depressed. But now it's like, like, you know, it's kind of weird. You know when you, you're in a, like, bad mindset? Like, yeah, you I know, know how, you how to fix things. But you just don't have the mental capacity to actually yeah. follow through. Now, like I do. And that's one thing that I'm grateful for during this Ramadan. Um, it's not like a lesson, but it's like something I realized. I felt really close to Allah last year. Oh really? Because, yeah, because we had all these like things that we could do. This Ramadan didn't feel like as fulfilling as it was last year. Because last year we had it in lockdown, right? We had a lot of time to focus on Ramadan. It made me kind of grateful for the quarantine because I get to focus on Allah during that period of time. But this year we had a, it's been so hectic because I had school and assignments all, all in the same period of time. So I didn't really get to focus a lot. My piping. <laughs> Piping's doing good. 
should definitely be a piper, man. And a bakery. Um, I can be pipe though. <laughs> I love how we both shaved our arms for this. <laughs> that was so like TMI. <laughs> How do you balance Ramadan and everyday life? You know how you have your assignments and like yeah. uni life? That must be pretty stressful. How do you manage to still stay connected with Allah? For me, our family, we always have to do this like um, read the Quran and then go for Torah prayers and all yeah. that stuff. Right? That plus my assignments, that's when I get really, really stressed because like, yeah. I feel like this. I just feel so overwhelmed. There was this one thing that happened last year that made me rethink of like how I approach my assignments. It was like at a really bad point of my life last year. I was so stressed because I had so many things to do. I couldn't do anything at all. And then one day I was just like, you know what? I will just do what I can and leave the rest to Allah. I'll just do my best and Allah will take care of the rest. That worked out so well for me in the end. Not only did I manage to do my assignment, I did it well. And I could like feel like I managed to do it because Allah helped me. Wow. So that's how I approach my assignments this time. Like, I know Allah's, Allah's got my back, bro. <laughs> he does. He has our backs more than we deserve sometimes. Yeah, yeah. that's why. I'm wearing my new Baju Kabaya, you guys. This is the one? Yeah, this is the one. This is called Baju Kabaya, guys. It's called Baju Kabaya Nyonya, where I'm from. And basically, it derives from the Baba Nyonya, which is mm. a Chinese Malay. No. Ethnicity? Community? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But yeah, they came up with this and it's so beautiful. I always love wearing Baju Kabaya Nyonya. It's my favorite. You know, there was this one lady that I saw that was selling Kabaya Nyonya and she had like chickens on her. <laughs> it was like, it was, like <laughs> random really? stuff. She had like nice. bowls of noodles on her Kabaya, man. It's so cool. So, what do you guys do in Raya? Like, what's your tradition? In the morning, we go to this. Um, either the masjid or like the community side we pray the eat prayer and then we go home we all like come together and then we um, ask That's for forgiveness nice. yeah you ask for forgiveness from your parents and then you get the right dough <laughs> <laughs> after that then we go out visiting to other people usually it's the grandparents house first but in singapore the second day of raya is always my house everyone comes over and we have like big feasts and wow. my cousins always come over and we play and then at night we'll play like fireworks and stuff like that oh like, yeah Hi. what do you call it? bunga api? yeah yeah I love, oh my gosh I love bunga api for my family during Raya um normally we go to Eid prayer I always see like friends that I haven't seen in a very long time there it's like always like a reunion we go home and then Every, every, every Raya, my mom always makes a uh, rendang and pulut. <gasps> oh yeah, like, I forgot about the Raya food. That's like a, a tradition, we never miss that. I don't know, is that okay? Is it bad? I don't know, that's why. Like... <laughs> I like it though. Okay. Oh, it looks like a snake. Wait, I want to put one of those symbols as well. Don't okay, show well. me the symbol, surprise okay. me. Okay, look, look. Whoa! I know, oh, I actually wow. like it. Okay, okay. So we've got the sun and then we've got the moon. Why the sun? Because I feel like you're a big source of light in my life. Bro, <laughs> that's too cute. And you like warm me. You feel you make me feel warm. And the moon because at night it's when we get very um vulnerable, right? And that's um, how I feel like when I'm with you, I get to be vulnerable with you. Wow, ah! that's so cute. <laughs> Thanks, baby. Oh, I thought. You're gonna say the total opposite for night time. Okay. I thought it's because we're so chaotic at night. There's that as well. <laughs> well, for your one, I just did Ruby's footsteps. <laughs> Why is your hand so small and cute? <laughs> Look at our Hannah, oh my gosh. Do you think this went well? Do you think this is our redemption episode? Mm -hmm. Do you think mine resembles me? And I think hers does resemble hers. So that's it for today's episode. I hope you guys liked it. I think this episode was very more mellow. And I yeah. like that. I really like diversity in our different episodes. I want it to show different sides of us every episode. You know what I mean? Yeah. And today we went really personal with our religious. Yeah. Religious side of us. Yeah. And I hope a lot of you guys can relate to it or like... Just know that like our opinions is just our opinions. Yeah. It's not meant to like hurt anyone as well. Thank you guys for watching. We hope you guys enjoyed and learned something new. Give follow our Instagram accounts if you haven't already. Ding! Comment down below what are your Raya traditions. See you guys in the next episode. Bye! Bye! Bye.